in this video I'm going to talk about the image viewer in Ubuntu Mate called the Eye of Mate image viewer. Now the Eye of Mate image viewer is located in the applications menu under the graphics, graphics sub menu and then you select the Eye of Mate image viewer. When you click on that the Eye of Mate image viewer program appears on your screen. Now that's a long name, the Eye of Mate Image Viewer. So for the sake of this video, I'm only going to call it the Image Viewer. That's what I'm used to calling it. Now there's three buttons at the top right hand corner. A Minimize window that minimizes it to the task bar. There's a Maximize button which will maximize the window. And then there's a Restore button when you maximize it that restores it back to its original shape. And then there's the Close button that closes it out. I'm going to go back into the Eye of Mate image viewer, which is the, I'm going to say the image viewer. I'm going to maximize the screen. Now once you've got it up on your screen, you can open an image. To open an image, you can do it several ways. I'm going to show you three different ways in this video. The first way is by clicking on the image menu. And before I click on open, let's take a look at the parts at the top of the image viewer. The top of it, we have our title bar. Now the title bar without a picture uh, in the display area, we have the name of the program, which is the Eye of Mate Image Viewer. Once I open a picture, the name of the program disappears and becomes the image name. So whatever the image name is will appear in this uh, location. This is your menu bar. The menu bar contains the image menu, the edit menu, the view menu, the go menu and the help menu. When you go across these menus like for example the go menu if they're dim that means that, that can't be selected at this time. I can't go to a previous image or the next image because I have no image open on my screen. The same thing with the view. You know I've got uh, certain ones that are uh, that I can select but then there's others that I cannot. Uh, here I got the toolbar feature and I'll show you that before I close in the video in preferences. Alright let's go and open an image. If I click on the image menu, choose the open command, then I'm going to be in my picture folder. If I go to my Firebird, my 1968 Firebird, now I'm going to deliberately skip the first image and I'll show you why. I'm going to double click uh, the second image. Now as you can see here, the name of the program has now disappeared with the name of the image. Now if you look below the menu bar, we now have what is called a toolbar, which we have the toolbar in the earlier before I open the image but now the toolbar can actually work uh, as I explain the features. Now I deliberately chose picture number two because if I click the previous button I do have an image to go back to. If I were to open to number one it will only loop me to the end of the picture folder and instead of going from one to nineteen if I go next at the end of the image folder it takes me back to the beginning so you see with the previous and next it just allows me to navigate through my pictures and I only have nineteen it allows me to navigate through these nineteen pictures back to the original picture and I started with picture number two now if for some reason let's go uh, to one of these images here let's say for example on this one if I wanted to see what was a, that sticker on my window, the back window, notice the plus button. It don't allow me, a lot of times you see a plus, you means to add, like to add a picture, two pictures on the screen. This is not the case. The plus is not an add button. It's to enlarge the image. It makes it larger. So it's like adding more screen or more picture to this viewer. So when I click this, you can think of this like the zoom. I've clicked it twice three times. Now you can see here and I can pan. I can click on the picture and pan it around by dragging it with my mouse. If you, as you can see here there's a Q and then there's 95. That's 95 the Q. It's an old radio station I listened to when I was back in high school. Now if I wanted to zoom back out the minus button shrinks the image or zooms back out to the original location. Now let's say the next button is a number one. It just shows the image at its normal size. So if I click that that would be the normal size of the in image. Uh, that's what the normal size would look like. But when I first open it, it chose a small size to fit the entire image within the image viewer. The next one is to fit the image to the window. And that's basically the view that it was set at by the default when I open the picture. It fits the whole image in the viewer screen. 
if I wanted to see the original size, there's the original size. Now the next button, these buttons and this button, this button and this button allows you to rotate the image. The rotate left or rotate right. I can rotate all the way around, makes it look like the car is flipping, flipping out. So those are the rotate buttons. Now uh, before I close out the image viewer, there are other buttons that I can add to the image viewer, but before I do, I will show you, because I said I was going to show you more than one way to open. One was with the op image open. The other way of open, and I'm going to close without saving because I did flip the image. If I saved it, it wouldn't make any changes to it because it's back to its original position. Another way of opening an image, let's go into my pictures folder, into my Firebird folder. Let's say that I double click a picture of a thumbnail of my engine. That's another way I can open it, by double clicking an image within my file manager. Another way is I can add some additional buttons to my toolbar. Notice when I click toolbar here, I can add some additional commands, just like the commands where I go through the menu. But instead of going through a menu, I can click on these like the rotate button. If you look up here, first, next, previous, next, that's these buttons. View, I can zoom in, zoom out, go to the normal, best fit, that's on the toolbar. And if you go to edit, I can flip and do other things that's on the toolbars. So basically the features that I already have on the toolbar by default are commands that's mostly used through the menu. Here are some other commands that's known through the menu, like the first, I could drag it here, I could drag the last, I could drag properties, I could drag the save button. But remember I said I'm gonna show you another way, I can drag the open, folder and put it here. Let me close this out. Let me close this out. And let me close even this out. Go back to my program, graphics, I have Mate image viewer or the image viewer. When I hit the open button, I can now go into my pictures, my Firebird folder, randomly choose a picture and click open. So I've now added an extra way of opening on my uh, I have Mate image viewer program. Now there's another feature that I like that I can add to it. Notice I can put the print, I could put the full screen that will make it full screen without the bars, but let's say that I want to create a, or show a slideshow. I'm going to drag that to the bar and close this out. Now when I click on the slideshow button, you can go in the preferences and change the amount of time, but you can create yourself a slideshow that you can have displaying on its own and I'm not clicking any mouse buttons or pressing any keys on my keyboard if I do it will then I can escape back out uh, I can then maneuver as I normally would now when I go in my view notice that I had a button called full screen very similar to the maximize button but watch what this full screen button does it actually takes it full screen and when I hovered up there it brought down the menu I can leave full screen or I could navigate through them Another way I can navigate through them is by using my arrow buttons on my keyboard. So I could get away from the this and by using the arrow buttons. Now let me leave the full screen view. Let's say that I no longer want these additional buttons that I added to my toolbar. I want to remove those. To remove those, I go back to the toolbar. I can say restore back to its default. That's the way it was when I first opened the program. Now, before I close out the program and before I end the video, let me show you one last thing on uh, on this particular program. If you go into the view menu, notice it's got toolbar, status bar. I can go to image collection. And when I open the image collection, notice it adds an extra bar at the bottom. I can use the scroll bar. I can click on it, hold it, and scroll from beginning to end. That way I don't have to keep pressing the next, next, next. So let's say I had 150 pictures and I wanted to show somebody the first picture. I wanted to show them a middle picture. And let's say I wanted to show them a picture toward the end, but maybe not the end one next to the end and then the end picture. So by using this part, it allows you to scroll through the images. The only drawback by having this on your screen is it makes your images smaller. So if you're not using this, that's why it's turned off by default. If you're not using this feature much, you can go back to View or Edit. No, it's under View. Under Image Collection, deselect that, and it goes away. And those are some of the basic features. Now, notice it did have a few uh, 
editing features like to rotate and then I could go to image and save or save as to give it a new name and if I did make uh, some changes and let me get out of here I didn't mean to click that I was gonna let's say I rotate it then the save button would now be dark it wasn't earlier I can save it to a different name I rotate back right uh, so even though I do have a save button and you might think well if this is only a viewer why do you have save in case I rotate it wanted to save it that's where I have the save feature uh, other than that this is not much of an editor it's only a viewer there's other editor programs or editing programs for uh, photographs and images built into Ubuntu Mate with other programs now before I close it out let me show you something on my website on my website I do have a section so if you're trying to open an image and it just will not open you can scroll down and I'm going so quickly here it is I do have an image that where you might want to look at the extension to see if it's supported by the eye of mate image viewer the formats that can be open with the image viewers are extensions that have ANI BMP GIF ICO JPEG JPG PCX, PNG, PNM, RAS, SVG, TGA, TIFF, WBMP, XBM, XPM. Now you can open a lot more formats than you can save as because it's not an editor. You can save an image as, but if you open, let's say that you open a bitmap, you can change it to by save as, you can change it to an icon or if you open a JPEG you might save it as a bitmap so you can interchange them but you only have a fewer features when you're saving it as a bitmap BMP ICO JPEG or JPG or PNG those are the only formats that you can save with the image viewer now for those of you that may have found this video on YouTube I will put the link to this to where you can learn more about the Eye of Mate and you can learn more about any of the other default programs within Ubuntu Mate because this website is designed specifically for covering Ubuntu Mate the operating system and all of the default programs within it to help new users or users that may just forgot how to use something can use it as a reference tool that is the end of this uh, video and I'm going to close without saving I hope you learned something from the Eye of Mate image viewer